What's up guys, it's Black and we got a bonus video today. The oh Dust to the Dawn tournament has been finally announced. It's been a long time coming, finally getting out there. So I'll make sure to link the signups down below just in case you haven't figured way. out where they are already. And I really encourage everybody to sign up and play. I don't care if like you're super new to the game or if like you've been playing this forever. Well, it's gonna be country. different just because the balance and enable is so oh, weird. Man. And it'd be really cool if we could just get like a new bracket running anyways, so. Go ahead and go sign up and we'll uh, we'll see you out there but the purpose of this video is to kind of highlight the changes since i know nobody really wants to read a change log and i think visually seeing how the changes impact the game might be a little bit better obviously the full change log will still be in the comments down below and everything but uh you'll get this video just to see stuff a little bit quicker and additionally i'll try to section off the video so you can jump to specific changes if that'll be really helpful if for posterity or coming back to it before we actually get into the changes, I really, really want to hammer down the philosophy behind these changes. Uh, because while I think maps centered around Navy, such as like Duel or just Bombardment Islands or any of those like big ones where Navy is going to be the, like the main focus could be fun. Uh, it's not really the focus of here. Uh, I don't think those are ever going to work, especially in 1v1s. You're just not going to have full Navy maps like that. Uh, the fact of the matter is with the assets that we have in this game and not adding new assets which is going to be a last resort uh full navy maps i think would be really boring i just just imagine if traditional maps only had rifles grenadiers apcs light tanks and v2s and those are the only combat units that you could build on the ground uh the game would just be really boring pretty fast i mean even remastered like light tank spam is just uh not great and i just don't think open ra with like the engine changes and the dynamics that it have would it would just suffer with that type of stuff so these changes aren't to bring full naval gameplay, uh, especially in the 1v1s. They're rather trying to make a support bow for naval uh, units, something like kind of like aircraft. So something really powerful when used correctly. You know, potentially you can build them up in large numbers, but uh, not necessarily game ending if they do get into large numbers or anything like that. And uh, what I really wanted to try to do is have like that soft counter and hard counter system. So just because somebody uses naval against you, doesn't mean you have to like instantly get to naval yourself to counter them. Uh, you could probably counter them with like aircraft, uh, maybe like a real soft counter with like vehicles and like artillery in the meantime, and then maybe transition to the Navy if you really want to later. But that's kind of what I'm aiming for, and uh, well, hopefully these changes will reflect that. So the first change we have is that ships and subs now have a new armor type called Steel. What this does is make ships a little bit more durable to certain units. Mainly tanks is like their biggest uh, downfall. Without Steel, heavy tanks and medium tanks pretty much wreck every ship. Uh, destroyer versus medium tank is pretty close medium tank barely wins out but uh like with first like a gunboat or like a cruiser or don't even get me started and they can actually attack a sub or missile sub it's just it's not a fair fight at all and it's kind of sad that uh to kind of that a little bit our artillery and v2 are actually now better dealing with naval units so there's a little bit of trade-off there uh destroyers can still comfortably sit outside the range of tanks too so you don't kind of worry about that but uh you know, if a ship's idle, then our artillery or just a V2 will absolutely just destroy these ships. So uh, you're going to want to micro them and stamp off them pretty well. Uh, lastly, the biggest change with the steel armor is that uh, Blackhawks and Yaks are no longer effective against subs. A sub will now survive with a third of its health after a full Blackhawk run, which before it, it would, a Blackhawk would kill one sub and then leave a second sub at a third health. So you're pretty much getting a full sub of health difference there. Uh, instead, if you want to use aircraft to get subs, you're going to want to use like longbows and bigs. Uh, those can now kill a sub with like two per load or one missile sub per load. So they're much more effective at dealing with subs and they're going to be a little bit better that way. And I think that makes more sense anyways, rather than having a tier two unit that can just counter everything, especially in the Soviet arsenal. This next change works in conjunction with the previous change and the one after this, and that's going to be that sub surface on any damage. This is a nod to how it was in RA-95. Uh, you could shoot with a rifle or just a tank or just a random like splash damage would cause a sub to surface uh, it was kind of weird in the original and it's kind of weird here but honestly it, i think it makes a big difference the biggest thing this is going to help is that blockading the entry to water as soviets is like going to be a lot harder uh if allies can see like or know where the subs are they can shoot them you can tickle them to death with a rifle or you know if you have artillery or tanks close by you know can slowly poke them that way uh but it also means like MIGs and Yaks can now reliably hit subs before just like the time that they were on the surface and then underwater where they're completely immune to damage was really narrow and so it was very hard to actually get them. But now as long as you can see that sub, 
uh, or know where the sub is, you can force fire and deal with that way and you'll get your damage off. So that's going to be a big change there. After that, just to kind of round out making blockades less impactful, defenses can now detect subs. And since subs surface aren't any damage, that means defenses will just automatically shoot subs. So, uh, you know, if you're trying to place that naval yard and you're like in a little cove, you can just build up around, place a test coil or turret or whatever. And if there's subs within range, then those subs are going to die unless they get out of there. So that's going to completely change the way that blockades work. Um, also, in addition to that, infantry do detect subs at one cell, like away. Is it really relevant? No, but it's kind of how stealth has worked into open RA currently. So I just wanted to add that in. Besides, I mean, honestly, are you gonna really tell me that a rifleman standing on the shore can't really see a sub that's like two meters away? Like, come on, right? And for our next case, just in case you are too far away from defenses, uh, infantry, anything with detection, or like your sub pin also has that 10 range uh, detection, spy planes can also detect subs. So, uh, Soviets for Soviets, sub for sub is like shrewd knife fights. They're like four cells away of detection before they see each other. So. Mutually, like especially in the base game, it just ends in mutual destruction, no matter who really fires first there. Uh, sometimes having that extra vision can make all the difference, and so I really wanted to give so it's something deeper, uh, rather than just blindly trying to detect enemy subs and possibly losing their own subs at the same time. But don't worry, if you're still on that allied bandwagon and you're an uh, allied dog, uh, you can now have Sonar Pulse available if you have a trade and you'll. Uh, structure or tech structure. So I actually think this change is quite interesting. The way that I really want to do this originally is uh, too complicated for me. Maybe that'll happen one day. But for now, the way this works is uh, pretty much as a spy plane, but it can only be targeted on, on water. Um, the kind of neat thing about that is if you're like targeting the water right next to the shore, then you're still going to get all that vision on the shore anyways. So if there was just like a single pond in the middle of a map, uh, you could use the sonar pulse on that and then actually use it towards your ground units as a, a vision advantage there. But uh, so it's uh, definitely like a little bit weird in that sense, but it's also kind of cool. And, you know, this is a support power that I don't think I've ever actually seen in all the years that I've played Open RA. Um, and I don't think I would ever actually see it anytime soon here. Like, Creo infiltrating a nuke silo in Rattle versus me and Orb is like the first time I've ever seen that. And that's been around for at least a good while, so. Uh, if this ever actually got used, like, in a series of, like, not just somebody goofing off or, like, uh, kind of trolling dead, it'd be really cool to see and see how actually impactful it would be, which, you know, I don't think it's going to be game-changing, but, you know, like a 3v3, like, just having that extra spy plane type power, as long as there's water nearby, would be pretty cool. And now the last mechanical change. Uh, subs have gained resistance to Blackhawk and Yak in particular, and also tanks, but... They've also been exposed to completely normal weaponry, so they've kind of been, you know, nerfed in that sense. So they really kind of need another advantage. And that advantage is going to be that ships and subs will only auto target with depth charges and torpedoes. This means that subs won't get one two punched by like gunboats anymore. They won't get the, their pellet shot at them and then depth charged afterwards. Same thing with destroyer missiles, uh, they'll only be able to use those depth charges on them. Uh, Bigger than that, it also means that like cruisers and missile subs won't auto attack subs, which you can force fire, so you're gonna have to have some fancy micro there. And if you do force fire and manage to land a hit, uh, you're actually gonna do a lot of damage to subs just because of the nature of the, the damage that those do. But uh, what this really means is that allied ships are now relying on detection or force fire to deal with subs or mobility. That's gonna be like the ways they combat them. Uh, depth charges have a range of six cells. So it's, it's really close, and then with detection, it's going to be even shorter than that, unless it's a, a gunboat. So this makes allied ships really vulnerable if they're just attack move or just happen upon a sub. A sub can really kind of fire back that torpedo quickly. And uh, so sub for ship macro is actually going to be really intense. It's going to be, you know, quite difficult to do. And I think it's going to be quite a high skill cap there, which should be really cool to see. I still think allied ships have a bit of the advantage in avoiding torpedoes, but subs in large numbers can doubt right, like outright deal with them. And then like on a one 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 I think it's nearly anyone's game. Again, I'd give it just a slight edge to the allied ships just because of that mobility, but you know, the price differences, which we'll get into later, are a little bit different now, so it's, uh, it's definitely going to be better for subs than it was before. So first up with the unit changes, we're going to talk about subs since they've had quite a bit of rebalancing. Uh, got a lot of buffs, got a lot of nerfs with all the mechanical changes and stuff like that. So the first big change on the sub itself is that they're now cheaper at 750 compared to the 954. So they're one and a half uh, gunboats 
and they're only 700% of Age Destroyers, so they're kind of in that middle ground. Additionally, their speed has been up from 85 from 78, so a little bit faster. And in addition to that, their turn rate is also 24 from 16. So this is going to allow them to better dodge both torpedoes and depth charges to be able to turn and run a gun faster. Uh, but it also allows them to just reposition and avoid force fire micro a little bit easier, rather than before where they just slowly and cumbersome get hit a lot of the time. Uh, in addition to that, with avoiding force fire, their cloak delay is now 20 from 50, so 150% faster. Uh, subs can pretty much be a ghost if they want to, especially without vision support. Um, like they can shoot, move, shoot, move, and it's gonna be really hard to track them down. But if they are sitting static and just trying to shoot, they're gonna be super easy prey. You know, those artillery V2 are gonna deal with them, aircraft ghouls so would be very easy to deal with them there. Additionally, torpedoes have been reworked. They no longer seek, which is kind of how it was in our RA95 as well. They just kind of shot really fast and were uh, easily avoidable. So we've kind of done something similar here. Uh, their speed has doubled from 85 to 170. Their splash is a little bit less at 320 from 426, and their wood damage is much lower at 35% over their 75 before. Uh, their damage to steel is also lower at 65 from 75. So they did 75 versus light and then only 10 versus heavy. So they're, they're going to be better in steel and also a little bit worse just depending on what it is. But basically what those uh, changes all mean is it's going to take a sub three torpedoes to kill another sub. Uh, if it's vet two, it will two shot a sub. Uh, and the old way, it only took two torpedoes to kill a sub. Missile subs, it's going to take four torpedoes to kill them versus the old three torpedoes. Gunboats, it's going to take two torpedoes versus the old two, two torpedoes, so nothing changed there. Destroyers is going to take four torpedoes instead of the old three torpedoes, so it's actually a little bit of a nerf there. And cruisers are going to take seven now, so that's quite a bit of a nerf rather than the old five. So, you know, your two extra ones there does make a difference. Cruisers are going to live a little bit longer over subs, which is, I think, a good thing. Transports, it's going to take four instead of two, so transports are definitely buffed in that sense. And the, the, kind of the big one is, like, sub pen or naval yards are going to take 12 torpedoes instead of the old eight, so 33% more uh, damage just to kill them. And again, that's going to help stop blockades, which are a big problem. Those subs are also a lot better now. Their turn speed got up from 16 to 12, so they're 33% faster there. Their cloak really dropped from 100 to 20, which is the same as the subs, so they're going to be very quick on that cloak and dagger. Uh, no longer will missile subs just die after they shoot a volley because a black hog was nearby and like breathed in their direction. Also to help keep them alive better, their self detection has been up to 7 from 4. They might be able to avoid enemy subs with this a little bit since subs also have 4 detection, so they got 3 extra cells there. Uh, that could make all the difference, at the very least perhaps make a, a sub lose them with uh, bad tracking. However, the, the biggest change to missile sub is that they're now a tier 2 unit, so it's a tier 3. So Soviets will no longer, you know, if they just hold out water for the early game into the mid game, they actually can do something rather than have to hold it all the way to tier 3. Uh, that'll give them a lot more, like, investment for that 2,000 credit that they're going to have. Yeah, it is 2,000 credits in the mid game, which is, you know, significant, but no, maybe if they actually do something with that. This brings us to the M sub missile. Uh, did not touch AA, so they're still going to be the same there. Uh, but what is more powerful is that land missile. The reload delay dropped from 300 to 250, so about 20% faster there. Uh, its damage reverse armage types has definitely been improved. Uh, you have 80 on none from 40, so double there. Light is only up to 48 from 30, so not as significant there. Heavy, 38 from 30, and then seal is only 48, so they're doing half the damage they, they normally did. Uh, or they normally would, but since stuff, stuff was heavier or light before, they're doing about either the same damage or more, uh, especially to ally ships with their steel damage. So, uh, biggest change there is you know, infantry I can actually be killed rather than before just looking and watching a missile slowly descend from the skies and then landing near you and not being that scared. You know, a couple hits from missile subs into a blob of infantry are going to be pretty effective, not as effective as like you know, V2s and stuff like that since they fire faster, but they do have like a similar damage output to a V2 when they do hit in the center of a blob. And then, lastly, to kind of couple with that, the projectile is faster at 215 from 162. That's going to make ground voices a lot more vulnerable if they're standing by uh, and maybe hit some targets that are transitioning to. The wood damage has not been changed. It is only 50 and that was how it was before. So, you know, the only DPS increase they're going to get from doing structure damage is just the quicker uh, reload and the quicker projectile speed. 
Gunboats have also got quite a number of changes to them. Their turn speed was actually reduced to match that of subs, so they're at both at 24 speed now. Other than that, they really weren't touched mechanically. Uh, most of their stuff went into the weapon, so their weapon damage went up from 2,500 to 3,500, so about like almost a third there. Uh, plus they do 100, 105 to steel versus the old 100 to heavy and 72 to light, so the light doesn't actually matter. We'll get into that a little bit, but you know they are going to be actually more effective at dealing with tanks for one, uh, defenses, and then especially ships. Uh, their bullet speed got up to that of a tank, so it's at 682 from 426, so before it was pathetically slow. Now it's the same as the tanks, so it's going to be much harder to dodge. What this really does is it makes them actually decent early harassers. They can poke and prod at harvest near the shore and it's actually going to be a threat. You know, they aren't fully cost efficient dealing with tanks and defenses and turrets like that, but they do pack a punch and you know, since they are cheap and fast at 500, you're going to be able to put a lot of them. Micro obviously going to help with their speed and keep them moving. They're going to be able to avoid a little bit of the damage to stuff stuff. Uh, in fact, they are marginally better at dealing with destroyers cost for cost. However, like good destroyer micro can counter that. So if a destroyer is running away versus a gunboat, it's going to lose. But you know, if that destroyer is just sitting there static, then two gunboats will easily deal with them. In addition to their bullet, and this is going to go into destroyers a little bit too, but depth charges got reworked. So the reload delay has been up from 60 to 100. The range is increased by one cell to six cells from five. Their speed's a little bit faster at 148 to 125. And their inaccuracy has been significantly nerfed. It used to be a tenth of a cell, now it's one full cell. I think the purpose and the result of these changes, I think that gunboats are going to be dealing with subs either through detection and sight for destroyers or just pure mass against subs since it's three to two there. A uh, gunboat costs 500, a sub costs 750, so you can have three gunboats to every two subs. With the changes to depth charges, uh, clumps of subs are going to be much more vulnerable with that inaccuracy and all the slashes are going to deal a lot of damage there. But it's also a little bit easier to use and less painful with the slow speed they had before. And then the last thing, it's kind of important to note that the gunboat detection range is bigger than their, their cannon range. So you can't ever like force fire a sub unless like you know exactly where it is from beyond the range. Realistically, like you're only ever going to use depth charges from a gunboat against subs. And that's a, uh, that could be interesting. And like I said, if you really want to use that cannon, you're going to have to like know exactly where that sub is well in advance. Destroyers have been ground to dust in this ballast patch, and yet somehow they're still pretty good overall. Their turn speed got dropped from 28 to 24, so the same as the sub and gunboat now. Their vision was decreased by a couple cells, so they used to be 6, now they're 4. Their detection was also dropped from 4 cells to 3 cells, so they pretty much can only see a sub while they're right on top of them. But the biggest changes to Destroyer were the, the weapons. The Stinger now does 66 instead of 88 from wood so that's 25 percent damage reduction same thing with light 66 from 88 heavy took less of a reduction at 100 instead of the 120 so it had it up bonus 20 percent there now it's a flat 100 versus steel 2 and then the biggest one is their a was heavily nerfed at 58 from 100 so uh they do so much much less damage the AA before they're also beefier because of that steel armor type so before where it was i'm just going to build destroyers and nothing but destroyers and then maybe fit in a cruiser late game when i've already won uh, now it's a question of do I need to build destroyers, do I need to build more gunboats, do, is it time to fill in some cruisers or not. Uh, but in AA in particular that's like where all the, the, the real nerf is so like it's going to take 5 volleys to kill a Chinook now uh, instead of the 4 before so you know plus 1 there. Blackhawks are going to get killed in 4 volleys instead of the old 3. Longbows are going to take 5 volleys instead of the old 3 but a vet 1 destroyer will 4 shot a Blackhawk. Yaks are going to take three volumes to the old two, so that's kind of a big difference there. Uh, and then again, a vet one destroyer will two shot a yak. And then MIGs are going to take three volleys versus the old three volleys. Nothing changed versus MIGs, but MIGs, you know, had the speed to get away there anyway, so. Uh, don't get it twisted. Massive stories still deal with air and pretty much everything. But uh, now at least air can sort of have a chance, especially MIGs and Blackhawks in like one versus ones. But uh, it, they're just not as effective as they were before. And again, the last change for Destroyer is depth charges. So back in the original RA-95, Destroyers had three depth charges. And once again, they have three depth charges here. That's going to be a little bit slower reload than the gunboat depth charges. Gunboat depth charges was charged at 100. This one's going to be 150, so 50% slower there. But having those three depth charges instead of the one is going to be more damage. So it, I think it's something like 200% more damage overall. Um, Regardless, like, destroyers actually be pretty efficient with doing subs, especially groups of subs, like, if they're clumped up together. And alternatively, you can still force fire with cruisers or destroyers, since their missile is going to be longer than their depth charge range, so you can deal with them that way too. 
Transports are in a pickle, with Navy kind of taking on that support role. Having five tanks show up at any one point is kind of not worth it. You're probably just better off having those five tanks be with a regular army. So as a result, we've uh, nerfed their cost from 700 to 500, so 200 dollars cheaper there. Their HP has increased from 35,000 to 40,000, so a 5,000 increase there. And their cargo went up from 5 to 10, so yes, you can lose 10 tanks in a transport and give something instantly heroic, uh, and that will be devastating. At the same time, you could probably argue that 10 tanks showing up on your back door with the mobility of a chronosphere, and then just being able to stay there effectively with transport is uh, pretty big if you want to be that bold. I would still argue, however, that you're probably better off not having 10 tanks in a transport and just 10 tanks in your main army is going to be better. But at least now you can have like a semi-deadly attack force, you know, one tank, five rockets, four rifles or something like that, or just 10 grands and flames showing up in the back door is going to be, you know, less expensive to lose, but also super impactful if it does happen. So uh, there's been talk about putting transports with like weight like they did in RI2, so like an MCV would be like a three weight or like heavy tanks would be like two weight or something like that and like you know i'm totally fine with doing that that's kind of what people want it's just like you know having five tanks again showing up is not that great so uh just the weights would have to be changed or maybe the transport carry capacity would have to be increased to like 15 or something like that so that's that's definitely possible but for this one we're just letting people run and if they want to throw in 10 tanks and take the risk then they absolutely can but additionally just like on the naval side of battles transports could actually have a role there i think uh they're so fast that they can draw enemy fire especially like sub fire which they could you know wasting torpedoes is kind of big and at 500 pop they're pretty cheap so you could also argue that maybe having one transport is worth the loss of the DPS from a uh, gunboat just because of the extra armor you're going to get there. Hopefully, you know, then now that I've thrown that out there, we'll get some empirical evidence when people start playtesting this stuff and we'll we'll actually get some solid numbers on there, but we'll have to see. Sub pens and shipyards now have their cost standardized to 600, so a sub pen used to be 800 and a shipyard used to be 1000. As a result, their HP has been reduced to 75,000 instead of the 100,000. Uh, also, you know, of course, you'll find that fake shipyards reflect that too so suck at grand you're not the only thing that has an oddball 60 value anymore uh, if navy's going to be support you really don't want a thousand credits being used to tie up your build queue like that that's just so long now maybe you could argue that you want to build like an early navy yard instead of skipping or instead of a third or second rack or something like that just to get like a gunboat out to kind of harass maybe there's a thing there we'll have to see but it's also going to be like less oppressive to be locking uh, you, you'll be able to rebuild those shipyards faster as they get destroyed having that cheaper shipyard or sub pen at 600 i think is definitely going to make a big difference for support in naval battles now you might have noticed that i skipped cruisers and that's because i kind of wanted to end the naval balance video on them because you see, if you're old like me, you probably played this game when it first came out in RA95. There's probably a good chance that you played the first Allied mission with Tanya, and you killed the power, and you saved Einstein, and then these big behemoth that cruisers rolled up and absolutely obliterated that Soviet base. And from that moment, they kind of held like a special like place in your Command and Conquer pecking order, uh, just because of their awesome power that they had. The one flaw that cruisers had in the original was that they could miss a target at a certain distance and it, like consistently like they had the same spread pattern. Otherwise like really nothing withstood their weapon like buildings crumbled instantly. Infantry were instant missed and if there was a clump of infantry which again probably shouldn't be building an RNA 5 but if you did uh, they were just obliterated. And like yeah tanks withstood a little bit better but a direct hit from a tank would like get wrecked by a cruiser so uh, cruisers were really the, the chads of the sea which brings me to open array's cruiser where they're like the virgin meme uh they don't annihilate infantry at all like they rarely kill one on a direct hit uh, tanks absolutely destroy them if they're close enough buildings take pretty long to kill and like they can't even avoid a sub torpedo in like the unbalanced version like with the tracking torpedoes a sub will just kill a cruiser and it's it's kind of sad sure if you have like 10 cruisers and like you're doing that much damage you could also probably just have like 12 longbows and do even more damage everywhere else or just so much more infantry that which would matter so cruisers in open array just as they are now are just are so bad uh so i changed nothing mechanically about cruisers they're still super slow uh they didn't get a turn speed or anything like that all they really got is damage upgrades the damage is so much better now they do a full 100 percent damage versus the 60 that they did before versus none so infantry are absolutely going to get obliterated again 
their light damage went up to 75 from 35 so your rangers your flax your tesla tanks stuff like that is going to be absolutely obliterated their heavy went up not as much to 35 from 25 so tanks are still going to be okay and stuff like that and they're still set at 40 so they're going to do a lot of damage to ships so allied versus allied ship battles i think cruisers are actually going to make a big difference there and then if you ever do you know where a clump of subs is like you're just seeing a rally point come out of a sub pin uh and you force fire there with the cruiser they're gonna obliterate the subs like it's, it's gonna be bad which you know an eight inch gun shooting a sub is probably gonna sink a lot of subs if they hit so their wood damage remain unchanged they're still gonna be kind of slow at buildings but they did get a bullet speed increase from 215 to, from 204 yeah it's gonna be a little bit faster there so now kind of how it works out is like cruisers are, are basically like for artillery shells like they're a little bit less effective than artillery shell but they're absolutely going to be wrecking infantry you know these things do cost 2400 so they're not exactly cheap and i kind of want them to have some power with that so that's why they got all these significant uh damage increases they can kind of avoid subs since subs lost tracking with their torpedoes only if they're running a straight line if they're like kind of zigzagging back and forth and subs will eventually hunt them down yeah that's pr that's pretty much all the changes cruisers are going to be biggy and beefy now i think there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff here and we'll have to see but till then i'm putting out a bunch of like playtest maps uh, varying degrees until the tournament comes and we'll have to see how the tournament goes and the future patches after that but until then i'll see you all next time